Hello and welcome to this video which is going to be my healer guide or battleground healer guide for the Scribes of Fate DLC. So quickly to touch on what's changed this patch. Um, the Ozzy Sun monster set was introduced. The Ozzy Sun monster set gives us armor when we're overhealing and it gives us mana vitality, us mana vitality when we're not overhealing. The difference between this and Symphony of Blade is of course one, we get this boss ourselves, two is an entirely defensive buff that gives us a bunch of armor. And because of this, uh, I've introduced a lot of changes in my build to accommodate for this. So, first off, the Ozzy Sun monster set is working. It's just sparked and does not show the armor in your in your screen. So, it does work. Um, uh, secondly, because we do get a bunch of armor from Ozzy Sun, there's really no point in double barring our defensive set. And the previous defensive set was Pariah, and I said that that was the strongest defensive set, and I meant that when I said it. Pariah is the strongest defensive set to the double bar. There is a set that does give more armor, and this name of that set is Ethereal Ascension. So essentially what Ethereal Ascension does is that it gives you 7377 armor at all times, so it doesn't scale off your health. The cost of this is of course that your block, sprint, dodge, and break free is more expensive, so if you're gonna double bar a defensive monster set. This is a really bad set to double bar. Um, but if you're just gonna back bar it, then it's very, very strong because essentially by having this on my sword and ball bar, my blocking and breaking free is gonna be more expensive. So we do have more stamina drains. But all the sprinting and roll dodging that I'm doing, I can do on my rest of bar and not be affected by this debuff. So that is essentially how we use this more powerful monster set. The break even point for Ethereal Ascension versus Pariah is 36%. So at 36% HP, your Pariah gives the same amount of armor. This is not really relevant because we have so much armor from Ethereal Ascension and uh, we have Ozisan and we have a bunch of heavy pieces in Reinforced. The uh, actual point where you're hitting 50% resistance is much higher. So you can still use Pariah and just use a back bar and it's gonna be the exact almost the exact same but some of the high pen builds are going to do more damage to you if you're using pariah i feel like ethereal ascension is still worth it just because it gives all that armor on top which helps you keep osis on constantly proccing and essentially you just constantly add full armor always taking 50 percent reduced damage so what else changed well obviously we're back buying osis on it not not we're back buying ethereal ascension that means we can front bar Valiant Cry um, on our resto stuff. We're using, instead of Spell Power Potion, we're using um, the tri -step Potions. So that means that on our front bar, we need to have Inner Light to get the crit so that we can consistently proc Valiant Cry. But by front buying Valiant Cry, giving up the Black Rose stuff, we can then use a Mythic. First off, it also allows us to get that one priest trainee, the Garland Chain, you can get this from doing a stretch Mokai quest, or you can just buy it like I did. But the mythic that we're gonna use is Death Dealer's Fete. This is essentially just a big stat buff. There is another mythic that you could potentially use, which is the Pelts of Enlefe, and I've played a lot around with this mythic because it's actually really, really fun in PvE. I found it to be absolutely miserable to use in PvP because if you focus on this, then there's so much else in the fight that you're missing. And you're like the two ultimates that we're using, which is Life Giver and Remembrance, are not really ultimates that you use on cooldown, so you never really get the full utility of using Pulse and Lofi. But it's an option. I prefer to just use Death Dealer's Fete. This is the uh, mid max uh, mythic to use, anyways, and it just gives you a bunch of stats. So it's essentially another tri stat food on top. Um, and that's really the changes. So we're back buying our defensive set. We're front buying Red Inquiry. We're using Death Dealer 30 and we're using Ozisan. And we're switching to using a bunch of reinforced pieces. And that's because we still want to be able to survive on our resto bar. So you can see here that if we're buffed, we're sitting at 32,000 spell resistance and 28,000 physical resistance without the. Um, without the um, Ozisan showing in the screen, so we're essentially sitting at armor cap for both our resistances, even on our resto bar, because of all the reinforced pieces. And that, I think, is important because you don't want to have to swap to your defensive bar just because one 
idiot in a nightblade is sitting there hitting on you or a bow spammer is spamming his bow on you you want to be able to just sit and heal your team and just ignore this idiot then there's the other uh, traits i'm going for three impenetrable this is because on the eu server there's a bunch of sorcerer players still um, and sorcerers are really the only ones that invest, invest into crit and you don't really want them to hit you with a big critical hit so i'd prefer to still on top of red Inquiry, have a few um, have a few uh, impenetrable traits. If you're concerned about the stamina drain, uh, and that's why I'm using the choice that potions, um, you could slot a couple of sturdy traits, and I've also experimented with this. So if you're blocking a lot, and because the block cost goes up, it makes sense to go for a couple of sturdy traits. So that's really the things that can be changed around. Else, the PvP people is pretty much the same. Um, we're still using race against uh, time and all these other skills of course the inner light has changed uh, before i was using um what's it called i was using the uh, time stop uh, time freeze a lot i don't do that much anymore i prefer to just go for the race that gets time um well, the back bar pretty much looks the same i uh, changed my focus to be the stamina restore um because again the stamina train is really what concerns me here and then i swapped to going for heating springs instead so the build is pretty much the same, changed a little bit, but pretty much the same. In terms of the monster sets, the alternatives are, of course, um, uh, there is the uh, Earth Core. Uh, but again, the focus of this is a PvP Battleground Healer POC build. Um, and Earth Core, I don't believe, is good enough for POCs. In an organized group, a sure thing, Earth Core is probably the best in slot monster set still. But in a pug group, you just risk it proccing random places, and the only thing that's good about Earthcore anymore is to cleanse. So if it doesn't proc on the group, then it's wasted. And then there is, um, of course, the ma magma. Um, but the problem with the magma is that it does give armor, like Ozisan, but it gives you the strong thing about it, of course, the minor coach. But if you're playing in a pug group, then there is probably going to be a couple of open soul users and they get zero from the magma um, set so that's why i think osisan is the strongest monster set and i think at least i think uh, symphony blade is the second strongest monster set and then there's a bunch of um sort of selfish defensive sets um that are also very powerful and totally okay to use uh, but in terms of group buffs, I, I, I believe it's um, it's these four that are powerful, but only two of them are really relevant in terms of a puck build, because the other two are just does not scale well with a puck group. And that's basically it for this video. Um, these are the changes I've made to my build, and I've already played around with it a bunch, and I feel like this is very, very, very powerful. Um, and thank you for watching.